Hello everyone. Today, this is going to be a little bit different type of video in our squatting progression. Today is a little bit more towards the trainers of the audience. We're going to get into some advanced topics, some nitty gritty stuff. And today in this video, what I want to talk about is what is the foot doing when I'm squatting? So we're going to talk foot, we're going to talk ankle. First, to understand this, we need to go back over some pronation and supination. So when I supinate, my feet, if these are my feet, my feet kind of arch up like this. And then if I look on the inside, I have arches in the middle of my feet. Okay, that's supinate. And then I pronate, my foot flattens. So this is the general way. Feel free to do this with me right now. Supinate, pronate, supinate, pronate. Okay. So what is happening there? I like to talk about two different things. Usually I like to talk about the ankle motion in the sagittal plane. So when I supinate, I plantar flex. And when I pronate, I dorsiflex. Dorsiflex meaning the knee comes forward. I'm not going to describe that. You know that. Um, so supinate, pronate, plantar flex, dorsiflex. At the top of a squat, I am supinated. I am plantar flexed. My knees are locked out. At the bottom of a squat, I progressively dorsiflex. I progressively pronate. And then I do the opposite. I come back and I re-supinate as I drive back up. Now, for the most part, that's like, that's the simple explanation. Okay. I want it. The second thing that I'll talk about though, is the, uh, calcaneus. So we talked about the ankle supinate, plantar flex, pronate, dorsiflex with the calcaneus. The calcaneus kind of steers this whole ship. It's the rudder of the foot that tells the foot what to do. So these are going to be my calcanei. Ready? Supinated my calcanei invert. And then as I pronate, they evert. Supinate, pronate, supinate, pronate. Okay, so at the bottom, it's partially normal for me to see eversion of the ankle. I want the middle of the foot in contact with the ground. I want a nice broad contact. I want sturdy feet in the ground. I don't want something like this, like super high arches. I don't want something specially pronated where I'm really collapsing. I want to let the calcaneus evert a little bit. Now, one thing I'm going to caution you, this can happen too much. And so you need to take a sagittal view. You need to take a view from the side so that you can see their front to back motion. So that when I do collapse here, is my weight shifting forward? Do I see a little bit of extra, what appears to be plantar flexion, but is really just shifting forward? Am I seeing too much of this? And then from the back view, what I'll see is I'll see a little extra pronation. I'll see a really flat foot. And most specifically, I'll see a really everted calcaneus, right? I'm kind of exaggerating. At no point is your calcaneus going to be quite that far away. Um, or that far <laughs> everted. That'd be painful. Maybe not. Probably not. So <laughs> as we come down, we pronate, we dorsiflex, we evert. As we come up, we invert, we supinate, yada, yada, yada. Now, how do we determine what is too much? Again, don't, don't let them shift forward. If they are shifting forward, it's something that you want to correct. How do I know if someone just has a temporary flat foot or if somebody has a structural bony flat foot? For what it's worth, I've only seen one structural bony uh, flat foot in the last nine years, and that was a podiatrist who had arches in his feet to support him. So those orthotics, those arches there, 
those uh, mechanical arches, I guess, those fake arches that he puts inserted into his shoe, those are very effective. He needs to use those. I will encourage him to use those. Most people flatten their feet out because they cannot oppose gravity well. So they over flatten, they try to find their toes, they try to find a little bit of extra pressure in the ground to support them. So if I'm looking at you and I see that you're falling forward and I see that your knees are caving in and I see that your heels are everting a lot, then I'm going to want to fix it. First thing that I'm usually going to do is I'm going to limit your depth, not let you squat as low. Second thing, maybe the first thing that I might do is elevate your heel. So what this does is it takes some um, mobility demands off of the ankle. And so now I don't need quite as much dorsiflexion, which is the movement that we're usually limited in. I don't need quite as much dorsiflexion to help me uh, get down into the bottom of the squat. Same kind of idea if I'm limiting the depth of the squat, I'm limiting the amount of dorsiflexion that you need. So consider that. Um, what else? Sometimes the, uh, not tibia, fibula gets in the way. And so we may want to mobilize the fibula out of the way to allow for full on uh, dorsiflexion. If the, uh, so tibia is up here, we're gonna do one foot. Tibia is up here, foot's down here. If I am dorsiflexing and the only way I can find my dorsiflexion motion is by bringing, this is the right leg, is by bringing the tibia inward and letting the knees collapse inward, then I do not have the ankle motion to support squatting in whatever environment that I'm squatting in currently. So I need to find another way around this. I can mobilize ankle motion by cueing the hips to go outward a little bit, and, or cueing the knees to go outward a little bit, and that will drive my tibia outward a little bit, and then keep it over like the second toe or so that will support a little bit more true ankle dorsiflexion. Um, biggest thing though, I'm not doing many ankle mobs. I'm not saying, hey, I want you to sit here and you know run through this. It's, it's not that it wouldn't help some people, I do believe that it would. It's just that I'd rather spend time putting this in the context of a squat rather than hoping and praying that some sort of ankle mobilization is enough to fix what we need to fix. Because what is the goal of the ankle mobilization? It's probably to fix the squat because that's where you're the most limited. It may be to fix gait and maybe we need to talk about that. But um, biggest things are I need this or the overarching theme here is I need this to come into some sort of uh, grander goal, right? What is this exercise for? We need to be able to answer that question. So recap, coming down, I need dorsiflexion, I need eversion, I need pronation. Coming up, I need the opposites, I need that supination, right? Um, it's more likely that you're gonna be limited in the going down part than the coming up part. If you do have an ankle injury, maybe a bone spur in the back of your ankle, that could limit your plantar flexion and that could limit your knee extension and your hip extension in your squat and it could limit your squat. It may be a bad idea for that person to try to lock all the way out at the top. They may want to hold a little bit of tension, not lock out at the top and come straight back down. Okay, so that that's why this is an advanced video because I'd be shocked if you ran into even one person in your lifetime that was like that right? But understanding these principles, understanding the motion that is required for squatting allows you to then treat anyone and it allows you to make up your own exercises that pertain better to each individual client. Okay, so that's my challenge. I want you to find a nice creative way to reteach the, uh, the squat. Maybe something that somebody else has tried, but maybe you just haven't tried. Give it a shot. If it doesn't work, stick with your method. As long as you're doing something that works, and as long as you have a somewhat confident reason for doing it, then I support you.